That's what Peter said it was. Look at Revelation 2, 11. And I'm closing in the book of the Revelation. We'll close there. We'll go to the white throne judgment and color tonight. Revelation 2, 11. Jesus said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. What is second death? Gehenna. That's the reason Jesus said, He that believeth in me shall never die. Gehenna won't touch you. I'll suffer, cut my head off, do whatever you want to do. Praise God. But burn here forever and ever. <laughs> Hallelujah unto God. That's a long, 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 long time. Well, that's Revelation 2, 11. Let's go on. Wedding and gnashing of teeth. Look at Revelation 20. Let's go ahead and we'll bring us to the white throne judgment. Before we go there, I want you to see that uh, it's a place of everlasting fire. You've seen that in Ezekiel uh, uh, 20. Take a look real quick. I want you to see this. Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel saw it. Ezekiel 20, verse 33 to 38. Take a look at it. And it reads like this. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you from the people and will gather you out of the countries when you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into a wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I'll purge out from you among the rebels from the rebels and them that transgress against me. There's a great purging that's going to be in the last days. It's an overflowing scourge. It will drive the hypocrite out. Only the pure in heart will see God. It will separate the chaff from the wheat, the hypocrite from the righteous, and the wicked from the profane, from the righteous and the holy. God said, I will purge out from among you the rebels, and them that transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Now, as for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go you serve everyone his idols, and hereafter also, if you will not hearken to me, but pollute my holy name, no more with your gifts and with your idols. For my holy mountain in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations. At this point, you're talking about eternity. Everlasting, everlasting eternity. If you'll take a look at, at 38, now bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. The last thing that the, that, the, that the Lord will do, he will purge out the rebels, the wicked from the righteous, the holy from the profane, so that these will not burn in an everlasting fire forever. And that's the work of God he's doing in the Feast of Trumpets to separate the chaff from the wheat from the ones that are in church to serve God, the ones that are not. And it will be everlasting. If you'll take a look, of going on, so you go all the way from Ezekiel 20 to Ezekiel 33, it talks about an everlasting hellfire damnation and the nations and the kings and the, of the nations. We don't have time to cover all that now. Let's go to Revelation 19. Daniel 7 said, where the beast and false prophet are, uh, they were cast in there, but, but it, one of them will have their lives prolonged for a season. That's where Satan himself, the dragon, the old serpent, the scorpion, will be bound with a chain for 1,000 years. Satan will be bound. Going into the millennial. The kingdom age. After the kingdom age, then we're going to come to Revelation. Take a look at Revelation 19. 
In Revelation 19, we have the coming of the Lord, the second advent, and the armies of heaven. It says, uh, the armies which are in heaven followed Jesus upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, king of kings, lord of lords. But take a look. I want you to see it. Revelation 19, verse 19 and 20. Second advent, he's coming. There's the horseman coming on the horse. That is second advent of Jesus. Revelation 19, verse 14 and 15. Now look at what's verse 19. And I saw the beast. These are ones that followed a false son of God, calling him a second person of the Godhead, not realizing that he is the father of glory that manifests in a body of flesh and blood to die for the sins of the world and then went back to his throne, to his glory. If he, Jesus said, if you do not believe, except you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. John 8, 24. Here we see the consummation of it. It says here, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies. We read about those armies there in Ezekiel 32 and 33. All those armies and the kings of the earth gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. That's us. The armies in heaven make but one army. It's a Mahay name, double camp. The angels of God riding with you and you also. The armies of heaven followed him and that calls it one army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet. You understand? That's all that's in the beast and this false son of God and a false Holy Ghost that wrought miracles before him. I don't care how many miracles you do. They wrought miracles. There were signs, miracles, and lying wonders. Spirits of devils working miracles. All the world deceived. That wrought miracles with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. They were deceived. They thought he was God manifest, walking miracles of God. But it was a mark of the beast. And them that worshiped his image. The image of God is the Son of God. There's no image of the Son of God. The image of the Son of God is the beast. The image of God, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. But the image of the Son of God is the beast. There is no such thing as an image of the Son of God. For the Son of God is the image of the Father. Amen. The beast is an image of the Son of God. It's an image of the second person of the Godhead that does not exist. Amen. And all those that worship his image, it went after this second person of the Godhead. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Amen. Bless God, brimstone. If you've ever seen a bless God volcano come out and brimstone flying down there, melting everything in a way, that's how hot hell's gonna be. You can take a slab of bacon like old brother R.J. Beer is supposed to do, cut the lights out in the church, take a flow blow, blow torch, light it up, and watch that, and, and, and he'd fry that bacon all over the place. Grease would be flying everywhere. And said, that ain't a drop in a bucket compared to what hell is going to be. And that'll burn a hole in your flesh and it's like that. No, this is fire and brimstone. The hottest fire there is. Hallelujah unto God because you had to worship some second person of the Godhead because you didn't have enough sense to give him the glory of the Father that was due unto his name. Amen. And when you beat your head against the wall and wonder why people, because of God, this world's blind to their eyes. You well knowing that they both before the millennial, before the millennial, God is angry. He takes that beast and that false prophet and he casts them alive. He don't kill them. They ain't some annihilation here and he casts them into Gehenna right there. Before the millennial, before the white throne judgment, he doesn't cast them devils in there. 
and they burned for 1,000 years. <laughs> they just begun. Where the beast and false prophet are cast into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Watch it now. Go to Revelation 20. <laughs> Look at verse 10. And the devil that deceived him was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. You want to serve a second person of the Godhead? That's where you're going to be. Amen. That beast and false prophet has been there for 1,000 years. We have the white throne judgment of Jesus after the millennial, and the beast and false prophet are still there. Where is your annihilation? They're still there, honey. They're still there burning where the beast and false prophet are. Now the devil joins them. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You better know the truth. <clears throat> you better know the truth. We have preached on hell tonight. The Lord was the master. He preached on hell and said, the only way you're going to make it is love for the brethren. If you say to your brother, Rekha, you're in danger of the council. You say you're a fool, you're going to burn. Gehenna. I don't think the body of Christ understands that because it's evil surmising, uh, malice, strife, envy, hate, murmurings, all this backbiting, and everything else. They don't understand. That's exactly what the devil wants to get you right here. Paul said you're rather you're better off being defrauded. Rather, and let them have it all than to wind up here. I don't know about you. Hell's hot and it's forever. I saw a great white throne. This is where we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Watch it here. And him that sat on it didn't say them, it said him. There's only one throne in heaven, that's Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before the books, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, somebody said the righteous won't be there. Yes, we will. Paul said, well, you all appear. We will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, a while ago, remember, I said that God is going to take the bodies in the grave, Kubar, with those in Sheol, hell, in a place of torment, and raise them from the dead and bring them to a white throne judgment and cast them into hell. Here's where you find that. Verse 13. What are the, two, what are the books? It's the book of life and the Biblion, the word of God. I'm boring, y'all. Verse 13, and the sea gave up the dead that were in them. And death, Kubar, and hell, Shoal, death and hell, not just the grave, but death and hell, the souls and the spirits of them with their bodies, Amen. death and hell, gave up their dead that were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. That's where God, uh, this is the second death. Death and hell gave up their dead. 
Somebody said, well, he's buried in the sea. You'll never see it. We shot them out in a rocket up there and burned them up in space. We, uh, we, we cremated them. You'll never find it. God will put your ashes back together. You ain't going to hide. You can, shut your, you can shoot yourself out there in a spaceship. You go into heaven there. You go into hell. I'm there. Where would you go? He is there, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Who is that Our Lord God omnipotent? He is a blessed, um, who is that Lord God omnipotent? Omnipotent. Who is that? It is a blessed and only potentate. That's who he is, blessed God, that's Jesus Christ. But he is omni. Everywhere, Almighty. What's that Omni mean? The sole one sovereign, God Almighty. Amen. He is the Lord God omnipotent. Read it. Who is He? The blessed and only omnipotentate. Who is that? Jesus Christ. First Timothy six fifteen. You better know who Jesus is. All I can say is it's hell, and brother, it's Gehenna. And that last enemy that's going to be destroyed is death. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it now. Somebody said, well, they're going to stay in hell, Brother Beard. They're going to stay in hell. No, they're not, because watch the next verse, and it says, and death and hell, takes all of this, and cast it into Gehenna too, and they all burn. There won't be any more death, and it won't be any more hell, a separated part, because it's going to be either heaven or Gehenna, hell. Heaven or hell? That's a last hell, and there's a heaven again, and a hell, son. If you don't know that true Jesus, bless God, it's hell forever. Hell, fire, and brimstone. Amen. What else can we do except bring you the word of God? Amen. I'm going to tell you something. It means something. It means something when to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Rather than to hear the frightful words, depart from me, you works of vintage, for I never knew you. Death and hell, Hades, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such a second death hath no power. Thank God in the Lord Jesus Christ, this second death, Gehenna, has no power over you. Jesus said, you will not be hurt of the second death. Sounds pretty good to me. Well, you're going to suffer for a little while. You're a little of light affliction here, which is but only for a moment. Worketh for you a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You poor little thing. The Hebrews were grabbed. Oh, look over here. Look at that suffering. Jesus, uh, Paul said, you have not strived, suffered under blood yet, striving against sin. Stop your belly aching. Take a look at what heaven and hell is. Forever, forever and ever, and then you'll quit your belly aching. There's a heaven again. There's a hell to shun. There's a lot of hells. But the final, last hell is Gehenna. And that's when he takes death, the grave, spirit, and hell, Hades, Sheol, and destroys it in Hell, Gehenna. Well, thank God. In Christ Jesus, O oh, death, where is thy sting? Hell, grave, where is thy victory? Death, hell, and the grave. I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Saith the amen. It's only in him you're going to escape this. The corruption of the world through lust. Only in Jesus. There's no other way. You've got to know who he is. You've got to be safe through the revelation of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can't be sick in there and, and, and think he's this and that and not, not give him the glory due to his name. You've got to know him. You've got to know the body of Christ because you are the body of the Christ. You did one of these things, my brother, and you've done it unto me. Cuss the body of Christ. See what happens to you, Balaam. Curse him. See what happens to you. Holler, you fool. See what happens to you. You're in danger of hell fire. Well, I'm baptized in Jesus' name. I got the Holy Ghost. Well, you ain't acting like it. 
You ain't acting like you ain't it. If you ain't acting like you ain't got it, then you ain't going to get it. Bring forth, he said, out of these works. You either do those works, those perfect works, or I'll remove the candlestick out of this place. You better repent and do your first works over. If you don't, I will remove the candlestick out of its place. Amen. Whosoever shall seek, seek to save his life is going to lose it. Lose it, and you're going to wind up in Gehenna. Whosoever shall seek to save his life is going to lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for the gospel's sake, the same shall find it. I'll take the cross any day of the week, son, to live with him forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're feeling. Jesus preached on hell more than he did heaven, preached on hell more than any other preacher. Because he knew he's the one that created. All things were created by him. He knows what it is. Paul knew it. He said, Paul, knowing the terror of the Lord, we play every man everywhere to repent. Amen. I'm going to tell you. It's a good idea. Same way with you preachers and you, you, you congregations over in India, Africa, Nepal, wherever you are. Take a good look at yourself. Because there's a heaven again and there is a hell to shine. And it's all in the tongue. That tongue is set on fire of hell. That thing has to be set. That set on fire of hell. You set that tongue on fire of hell. You will wind up in hell. By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Jesus, we thank you for this word. We thank you for all that you're doing, you're going to do. Speak, leading God by the Holy Ghost. Lord, save, save us from hell. Lord, we believe and persuade that you're able to perform that which you've begun or good work in us. You're able to perform it to the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, being convinced of that very thing. Take you as leaders and guide us, set our feet upon uh, the mountains, make our feet like hinds feet that we do not slip, not in one promise slip us, lest any of us could come short of entering to your west. Rest. He said, if any man lack faith, let him ask of God to give it to all men liberty and breath, breathe not, but let him ask in faith. God give us Faith, give us uh, knowledge, give us understanding. Let us under give us wisdom. Let us understand the ways, direct our paths, make broader steps, bring us into a broad place. Take us, use us, lead us, guide us, hide us behind the cross. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Let us get a good grip that there is a heaven where you are and a hell that is utter condemnation and torment fire and brimstone forever and ever where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched that there is no soul sleep that there is no annihilation you said it and you meant what you said and said what you meant therefore we look unto you the author and the finisher of our faith that we lay aside every sin that does so easily beset us and look unto you and we run this race that we might obtain we ask you to work, move, and bless each and every one here. Lord, perfect that which is lacking in us. For your great name's sake, not for any of our righteousness or our holiness, but for your great name's sake, in Jesus' name. <laughs>